Hello everyone and welcome to the video for section 6.3. This again is going to deal with separation of variables which we've already been talking about and uh, logistic equations. So you're going to start seeing some different types of equations that we have to separate the variables for. Uh, so just be aware of that and um, and then we'll also look at the logistic equation. Now remember with the logistic equation on this one that we're going to actually give you what that solution will come out to be because the integration techniques that you need to solve that one are not one, are ones that we haven't done and we don't have to do, uh, would be normally covered in a Calculus 2 course uh, and is not on the AB curriculum. So um, what we have, separation variables, our objectives for this one are number one, recognize and solve differential equations using separation of variables. Uh, use differential equations to model and solve applied problems and solve and analyze logistic differential equations. To start out with, what we want to do is we want to solve uh, the differential equation uh, 2xy prime minus the natural log of x squared equal to zero, subject to the initial condition that y of one equals 2. In other words, when x is 1, y is going to be 2. So what we have on this one, I'm going to start out, I need to get this to everything separated, and that's really going to be this, what you see right now as a separation. And then we'll do the integration after that. Uh, in this case, uh, 2xy prime minus the natural log of x squared equals 0. I'm going to first take this natural log of x squared to the other side. And so I have 2xy prime equals the natural log of x squared. And again, like I've said before, I like to replace the y prime with dy dx. So 2x dy dx equals natural log of x squared. So I go through, uh, I want to separate the variables. So the first thing I'm going to do is divide everything by 2x. So I have dy dx equals the natural log of x squared over 2x. But remember in this case, one of our log properties is that that exponent can be brought out in front, in which case, that 2 can come out here, and the 2's will then cancel out, and I'm left with dy dx equals the natural log of x over x, or when I go through and multiply now by dx, I have everything separated, it'll be dy equals the natural log of x over x dx. And so with that, I know I'm going to solve this one, I need to go through and integrate, so I'll have the integral of dy equals the integral of the natural log of x over x dx. Let's start now, before we go on, let's go and separate this screen a little bit with that line. And so I now have the integral of dy equals the integral of natural log of x over x dx. Well, the first thing I know is that the integral of dy is actually equal to y. So that's y equals the integral of ln x over x dx. Now to do this one, I'm going to do a substitution. And the substitution I'm going to use, I'm going to let u equal the natural log of x. So that means du is going to be 1 over x dx. And you'll notice that I'd have everything there. That natural log can be brought off to the, brought uh, off of the numerator. So I'd have natural log of x times 1 over x dx. So what I have right now is that y is going to equal the integral of, when I do the substitution, it's just u du. And so with that, I know y equals the integral of u du is just a power rule. It's going to be 1 half u squared plus c. In which case, u again is natural log of x, so y equals 1 half times the natural log of x, that thing squared, plus c. Now we do want to find a particular solution to this. I know that when x is 1, y is 2. So to find that solution, I'll plug 2 in for y, so I'll have 2 equals 1 half times the natural log of 1, that thing squared, plus c. Well, the natural log of 1 is 0, so what I find in this case is that this whole, the, this whole portion here is just going to end up canceling out, and I'm going to get that c is equal to 2. And so my particular solution to this 
uh, differential equation that we had at the beginning is that y equals 1 half times the natural log of x, that thing squared, plus 2. Now one thing you might uh, be asking yourself is why don't I take that 2, bring it down, and multiply the 1 half? Well, the, like we did over here in this one. The difference is that exponent there is on the x, while this one is on the natural log function itself. So I can't apply the log property to that one. So that would be the solution to this differential equation. The next one we have is uh, a logistic differential equation. Now, a logistic differential equation is going to be in this form. dy dt equals k times y times 1 minus y over l. These are logistic curves. Now, the interesting thing about a logistic curve is that it's actually a much more natural uh, model for a long-term population growth. The curve itself, when I look at a logistic curve, let me kind of draw some axes here, is that with a logistic curve, you will find two horizontal asymptotes. There'll be one here, and we'll say another one up here. And what happens to that logistic curve is it's, it's going to start close to that bottom one. It will go and grow, and it will grow almost exponentially, but then the growth will start to level off. And so that would be a logistic curve here. Now, the, what happens with this in terms of it modeling popula population growth is because what you have here is the asymptotes themselves actually have meaning in the problem. The lower horizontal asymptote, this one, is actually going to be the population, the minimum population you have for an organism or for an organism or something to survive. And then what you see up here at the upper one is actually the carrying capacity of the habitat. That if that in order to keep the population healthy, the population needs to be below that level. And what you find is that if you were to go and when you look at a slope field with this, you'll see this these two horizontal asymptotes there and the curves going in between there. But when you look at the slopes on the outside of them, what occurs is that if a population is starts below this below that horizontal asymptote, then the population might be okay for a little while, but it will eventually die out. Or populations that start up here uh, end up going and decreasing until they reach that particular uh, horizontal asymptote, the, whatever the comparing, carrying capacity is. But what happens here is that when I separate, when I have this differential equation like this, and I separate the variables, I'm going to get something like this. And when I actually take this thing and solve it, we have to use, uh, to solve this one, we have to use a technique called partial fraction decomposition. If you would like to see that, I can go through it with you. But uh, for our purposes right now, uh, we don't need to have that. But this thing right here, using partial fraction decomposition and then integrating, we solve it, we will get y equals L over 1 plus BE to the negative KT. Now the L is here and the K is here. That B right there represents our constant. That's like the C's that we've been using all along. I don't know why they change it to B here, but it is, it is a constant. And that will be found using the initial condition that you're given in the problem. Let's take a look at an example. I have a, we want to find a logistic equation uh, for this one where dy dx equals 2.8y times 1 minus y over 10. And we want it to go through the point 0, 07. So in this case, we know that k is equal to 2.8 and l is equal to 10. And remembering that the form of the solution is going to be this, I'll put 10 in for l and 2.8 in for k, and I get y equals 10 over 1 plus be to the negative 2.8t power. And now what we need to do is find out what b is. Well, that's where our initial condition right here will come into play. When I put 0 in for t and 7 in for y, I get 7 equals 10 over 1 plus be to the negative 2.8 times 0. Well, negative 2.8 times 0 is 0, and e to the 0 is 1, 
So I get 7 equals 10 over 1 plus b times 1, or, or just 1 plus b down there. Multiplying by uh, 1 plus b, I get 7 times 1 plus b equals 10. Distributing the 7, I get 7 plus 7b equals 10. And then solving for b, I get that b equals 3 sevenths. And so I can get my solution as y equals 10 over 1 plus 3 sevenths e to the negative 2.8 times t power. Or to go and get rid of the fraction, which is most of the time what they would do, we'll multiply top and bottom by 7. And so 7 times 10 is 70. And when I multiply this bottom times 7, I'll get 7 times 1. I have to distribute there. 7 times 1 is 7. And when I take 7 times the 3 sevenths, it will be 3e to the negative 2.8 to t power. So this would be our logistic equation for this particular differential equation. That would be the solution to it. Another thing you're going to hear is to find orthogonal trajectories. And, and what these are, these are curves that intersect at right angles. So what you're going to be given, you're going to be given um, a, a, a curve, an equation, and you're going to have to go and solve that equation, uh, or you know, you're going to have to take the derivative of that thing, and you're going to use that to find dy dx. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take the op, you're going to say dy dx equals something. And then you're going to give, tell me that dy dx then also equals the opposite reciprocal of that something. Because remember, these are supposed to be perpendicular, orthogonal. So they have to have, their slopes have to be opposite reciprocals. So we want dy dx to actually equal the opposite reciprocal of what we had before. And then we're going to use separation of variables to solve this, that differential equation. Now these things are used in electrostatics, thermodynamics, things like that. Uh, so it gets a little bit, you know, some, some complicated stuff there. But it is kind of an interesting uh, topic, especially when you start thinking that all the, everything would be perpendicular to each other. So let's see how this works. Now remember what I said. The first thing we have to do is find dy dx. So in this case, we want to find the orthogonal trajectories to x squared minus 2y squared equals c. So the first thing I have to do is find dy dx. So I take that. I take x squared minus 2y squared equals c. And I take the derivative with respect to x. So derivative of x squared is 2x. Derivative of negative 2y squared is going to be minus 4y times dy dx. And the derivative of that constant is going to be 0. Don't forget that. That often is something people forget. And that will then make problems almost impossible to do if you make that, that mistake. So what I'm going to do is I'll subtract the 2x from both sides. So I have negative 4y dy dx equals negative 2x. I divide by negative 4y. And so I have that dy dx is negative 2x over 4y. Or if I reduce that, dy dx equals x over 2y. So there's that first part. Now the next thing I have to do is remember that we're looking for the things that are perpendicular to it. So we know their slopes are going to be opposite reciprocals. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve the differential equation where dy dx equals the opposite reciprocal of what we have there, which would be negative 2y over x. And so with that, we come up back up over here. We have dy dx equals negative 2y over x, and I need to separate the variables. And one thing you can do that might help out in terms of seeing how it can separate, I'm going to pull that negative 2y down out in front. So it's negative 2y over x can also be thought of as negative 2y times 1 over x. I multiplied by dx and then divided by y. Now, I could have divided by negative 2y. It wouldn't make a difference. I decided I'd just leave the constant, um, the negative 2, over on the, the right-hand side. So I have now dy over y equals negative 2 times 1 over x dx. So I integrate that. The integral of dy over y equals negative 2 times the integral of 1 over x dx. So I have the natural log of the absolute value of y equals um, negative 2 times the natural log of the absolute value of x uh, plus c1. And when I take that, 
I use the log, the exponent rules, log properties, and I bring that negative 2 up here. Now that means that, remember, that's going to be net 1 over x squared. So that is going to guarantee that's a positive value, so I don't have to worry about that. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take that c1 and make that into something I combine, because I want to be able to solve it for y, which means I have to combine everything over here into a natural log. Because if I one of our properties from last year was that if you have the net if you have a natural log equal to a natural log, the two things inside the natural log would be equal to each other. Anyway, so c1 is equal to the natural log of e to the c1 power. And so combining those two, that's the natural log of y equals the natural log of e to the c1, x to the negative 2 power. Or y then equals cx to the negative 2. Or if you wanted to, you could say that's equal to c over x squared. And that would be our orthogonal trajectories. By putting in different values for c, different constant values for c, I would get another uh, function that is going to be perpendicular to these particular functions for whenever I put a value for c in there. Anyway, with that, we are now, this does conclude the video on uh, working with this, with these types of functions. Um, really, the main focus for you is going to be just going through and separating the variables, taking some, taking some of these things, getting those variables separated and solving them from that point on. So with that, I hope everything is going well, and I will see you at our next class.